There is uh, no question at all about the effort that has gone into making Nigeria an easier place for doing business. And if you look at the major indices, you know, that uh, the World Bank measurements go by, you know, we're looking, for instance, at uh, the ease of acquiring uh, uh, business registration, registration of companies, et cetera, which is now, which you can now do electronically. So that's, you know, uh, we've been able to uh, deal with that. The ease of uh, registration for tax, that's also uh, being done electronically. And, you know, several other areas where we've moved up, registration of title, et cetera. You know, these are areas uh, which, of course, the World Bank considered when uh, we moved up so many uh, spaces up. So we think that as far as the ease of doing business is concerned, you know, we're doing a lot. There's also uh, what we do now. We do focus labs where we look at investors who are interested in certain areas of the economy and who may be having difficulties. And we bring them into the same room with all of the MDAs and the uh, government agencies, the regulators that are concerned. And we work through those, uh, those issues with them and try and resolve this. And for, for us, I mean, attracting business is existential. So it's no question at all that we're going to make it as easy as possible for anyone who wants to do business. One of our major, aside from security and the economy, one of our major, the pl major planks of our policy is the anti-corruption war. And we've done, you know, uh, tremendously in, in that respect, especially with respect to grand corruption, official corruption, et cetera. And this is uh, borne out by the fact that our president was re recently nominated as the corruption champion for Africa, the anti-corruption champion for Africa. It, th th there's a lot that needs to be done, you know, and we're working through especially uh, processes that require, you know, interaction with uh, with tech, with bureaucrats, you know, and all of that. And we're working through that. We, the president re recently signed, well, not so recently, almost two years ago, signed Executive Order One, which basically speaks to the question of timelines for ensuring that there is delivery on issues of where, where you are processing uh, documents or where you are processing approvals and those sorts of things. Now, part of what, we, what we're trying to achieve is to remove whatever bottlenecks may encourage petty corruption. And that's why Executive Order 1 was signed. You know? And we're also you know, looking at how to ensure that there is less interference or less discretion, which is why we're doing a lot of stuff. We're going electronic in so many different things, company registration, approval processes, et cetera. So I think that. Uh, when we're next, when we're next, next uh, uh, assessed, uh, we're bound to do much, much, much better, especially on the on the anti-corruption index. I'm sure many uh, have probably at least heard uh, Boko Haram. Yes, they uh, operated largely in the northeast of Nigeria, you know, and uh, in the northeast of Nigeria, at some point, I mean, in 2014, they occupied about 14 local governments. Local governments are the provincial authorities. Uh, as of today, they occupy no territory whatsoever. So essentially, their influence is restricted to a part of the state where northern Borno. And really, they have, uh, in, in terms of occupying territory, we, we can say that, that that's no longer the case. But of course, we find very many opportunistic attacks, you know, uh, sometimes they're in search of uh, logistics, attack. Uh, uh, army camps, especially where they're in isolated areas and all that, attack villages every once in a while and all that. But the, the major threat for us uh, today is more the, uh, uh, the ISIS West Africa province, you know, Islam uh, West Africa province. And they have been operating mainly in the Lake Chad, uh, the Lake Chad Islands. Uh, and there we've worked with uh, the Lake Chad Basin Commission, our partners in Lake Chad Basin Commission, Chad, Niger, Cameroons, and all that, in order to prevent uh, them from being operational or having freedom of action in the, in the Lake Chad Island uh, area. And they also operate in some parts of southern Borno. But again, because we're working very closely with, our, with uh, Lake Chad Commission members and with our neighbors, uh, the multinational joint task force, which we have, we're able to contain a lot, of their, a lot of their activities. But of course, the major concern for us is that 
we want to ensure that this does not become a situation where ISIS, you know, finds a base in West Africa, which really is the reason why we've often, you know, uh, with uh, international partners, the, uh, the US, uh, the UK, and, you know, some European countries, uh, we've often uh, talked about how to put in place a system that enables us to not just enjoy uh, intelligence uh, gathering uh, from them and uh, training, but also perhaps uh, more support in terms of arms and ammunition, uh, especially the ease of purchasing arms and ammunition, which is very, very important for us in prosecuting this war effectively. I assume this will be a topic of conversation tomorrow with Vice President Pence when you meet with him in DC? Well, I'm not able to say exactly what I do, whether it will be or will not be, but obviously it will be, uh, it, 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 this is a very important point for us. We're, we're about to take questions from the audience in just a few minutes. Let me get the last question in uh, from me. Tell me about your thoughts about the election, where turnout was incredibly low um, in areas where the president received support. Turnout was very high. In areas where he does not have a lot of support, turnout was very low led to credible, credible accusations about voter suppression. Are, are you satisfied with the results of the election? And can you tell this audience that they were clean? First of all, that narrative is not even correct. I don't think it's correct at all to even suggest that in areas where the president won, there were you know, more voter turnout. And in some places, there was voter suppression. Not true at all. I think that, generally speaking, if you look at the trend of elections in Nigeria, and if you look at the figures of elections in Nigeria, there's absolutely no difference between this and 2015 elections. In the various places where we won in 2015, we won again. You know, in some cases, sometimes lower, sometimes higher, but we won again. In some of the places where we won in 2015, we lost. In some, we won. I'll give you an example, just to say that there couldn't have been voter suppression. So, so for example, in the Southwest, we lost in Oyo State. We won in Oyo State in, uh, in, in uh, 2015. So in the North Central, we won in Benue State in 2015. We lost now. So I, I don't think any of that, and, and, and you see, the poor problem is that when people lose elections, I mean, there's a tendency for them to find all sorts of reasons why they lost the elections. You will not find a single state, a single state where, even if you look at, uh, and, and I had a look at the petition of the, uh, of, of, of the uh, opposition, they are at the tribunal at the moment. So they give an example, for instance, of Borno State, which they say, oh, on account of the uh, insurgency in Borno State, there should not have been such a high turnout of voters. But in their own figures, the turnout is even higher. The figures that they give for the same Borno State. So I think a lot of this is not, there's no truth to it whatsoever. I think it's just people are, it's just sour grapes, frankly. Yeah. At this time, I'd like to invite members to join the conversation with questions.